people will join us. People will join us as they do. So welcome, ladies. I love it. These classes, Helen, these classes can be very big or small. It's really great. And I, I kind of have a secret love for the small classes because then I get to really work with, you know, with you guys very closely, which is always fun for me. Um, this drawing exercise is going to be done in, in ink today. Uh, so I'm going to repeat what I just said. So if you're going to be working in ink, the, the products you're going to need are these bamboo brushes. Um, a lot of bamboo brushes are made with goat hair, um, but uh, Nancy being at, at pointing out, this is not a cruelty free product, right? So these are synthetic bamboo brushes, uh, bamboo brushes, they cruelty free, no animals harmed in the making of these brushes. They have a very soft, I'm gonna have you guys practice again. You're gonna have a bamboo pen here. You can see mine is very dark because it's been dipped in ink many times. You're gonna have some water. You're gonna have some ink. Um, important, you're gonna have a paper towel. Hi, Sandra. Nice to see hey, you. Leah. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Hi, Sandra. Sandra, Helen is joining us from uh, South Africa today. First Oh, time. nice. Hi, Sandra's Sandra. in D.C. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Are you from Reuters? Yeah. Yes, oh, I am. Cool. Here, hold on. I'll pop you two up so you can meet each other just really quickly. <laughs> Very <laughs> important. Sandra. Sandra has is uh, on the desk. At, uh, I don't know exactly what your title is. I'm on is. the America's desk. I'm on the world desk in Washington. The world desk. Oh, cool. Okay. Nice. And she has I, word. Hmm? Go ahead. Sorry, go for it, Leah. No, you go for it. Oh, I was just going to introduce myself, but but you were saying. Um, oh, please do it. Introduce yourself. I'm I'm the Africa mining correspondent in Joburg. Oh wow. Well, that's a big job. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> Um, and Sandra has been at Reuters for a lot. She looks very young. <laughs> she's been at Reuters a long time. So if you ever have any questions about how this company works, she knows it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. That's really kind of you. Uh, all right. Okay. Uh, and let's see. Okay. <coughs> so um, we've got this. Uh, so last week we worked with a cow. Um, oh, and the other thing I have here, which is a little bit tricky to see, but I'm going to show you. I have, this is my Bristol paper. It's very smooth. It's a really good paper for ink. For ink users, we're going to start by, um, I have a, what's called a testing paper. This is just scratch paper. Um, before I make my ink marks, I might test my uh, my uh, brush to see what's on my brush to see that it's dark or light enough. Um, so I'd like us to start, if you can hang tight, Helen, for just a second while I get everybody used to ink. We've got one or two new people here on that subject. Um, so the first thing I'd like you to do is just simply to dip, open your brush, open your ink, dip your brush in. Uh, I'll just work on this. You can take a piece of Bristol paper if you want and just play. And look how gorgeous. So Marcy, just like dip your brush in the ink and make marks with it. Awesome. Hey, Helen, you already want this thing, don't you? See, like, yeah, I was just going to say, I think I might have some ink in the spare room. So I'm just going to go have a look. All I'm right. right look at it. See, look at this is what happens. People see this brush. Look what it does. So this brush is kind of designed to go skinny and then go fat and skinny. It's an absolutely gorgeous line. Hi, Osiris. Hi, Julia. Everybody's oh, hi, in. hi, everyone. How are you? Good. It's good to see everybody. Good to see you all. Um, so just take a moment, those of you working with ink. Hi, Julia. Um, to just once again, give yourself this is I'm actually taking precious Bristol paper because I just want to um, and making marks with it just to get used to what the brush can do. The second thing I'm going to have you do Beautiful. is dip Notice um, once I dip my brush in the ink, I'm now dipping it in the water. And notice, do it, a, do it a couple of times. And notice how your marks get a little bit grayer and lighter. See this? See as I dip my brush in the water, 
they get lighter. Now this is key. I'm gonna dip it in the other water too to get really light. This is key because if I dip my brush in the water and I have a watered down ink, I can actually scrub it off. See that? I have a minute or two before it dries where I can scrub it off. These guys have already dried here. If I put that mark down, I don't want it there. I can take my piece of paper and just cover it off. If I dip my brush right into the ink and I don't water it down, I cannot scrub it off. It's a little bit like the difference between compressed charcoal and the willow or the vine. So there you go. See, here's the mark I just made. If I try to scrub it off, I can't. Okay. But if I dip my brush in water, can you reach that paper again? I need some more. I need this. I yeah. can. Right? And the more watery, the better. So you can see, and but all of this stuff looks really cool anyway, right? So you can see that although we can't exactly erase with um, ink, we certainly can, right? If we water down our ink, we can do our first layer, our first drawing using this. We have a little bit more flexibility. Um, although, of course, the great thing about ink is that everything we do with it, it kind of urges us along a little bit faster than we'd like, a little bit more comfortable than we'd like. Um, Bettina made the very, who is not here this week, made the very excellent observation that like, um, it was so, uh, so exactly what ink is. You have to really accept your marks. So, you, you know, in some way you've got to work with them. Uh, with a pencil, we can erase, right? And then the last thing I want you to do is practice dipping. Oops, I got a little bit of, you can also take your bamboo pen. Uh, sometimes it's better to do it right side up. Uh, so other times it's better to do it you know, either way, see what works best for you. Um, dip your bamboo pen in the ink and notice that it makes an entirely different kind of mark. So these marks are soft and the bamboo pen is very hard. And look how fucking cool it looks on the paper. Com combined with these soft marks. I mean, this is what, it's, it's really compelling. And this is what I want you all to learn. This is what I think ink teaches really well, right? There's, it. right? It's like soft marks. So a good drawing or painting, abstract or figurative, has a couple of elements to it. One is variation in mark making, right? So these soft brush marks really stand out very nicely against the strong, sharp, um, uh, marks of the bamboo pin. Um, and you'll also notice you don't need, we're going to stop with start, we're going to start with soft brush marks. The bamboo pen is going to be one of the last things we do to really add structure to our drawing. Um, the other thing is that value definitions, like shapes of the brush marks, actually also are com compel us. So even though I'm just goofing around, it's kind of, and I mushed stuff up and I moved it around. This medium, it doesn't, uh, each mark has a huge impact, right? It creates this idea. So I like this um, concept that we very simply can create a lot of structure and dynamic interest with just these two different mark making tools, um, which is different than pencil or charcoal. Um, because those things you can erase, right? So we can get rid of anything that we don't like. We can sort of get rid of stuff in ink, but we can't like really do it. So go ahead and do it. I'd love actually to send, for you to send across the thread, your little sketch. I'll send mine. Helen, I just realized, do you have, are you on our WhatsApp chat? chat I don't think I'm, I don't think I am. Um, do you have WhatsApp? Yeah, I do, yeah. All right, I'm gonna hold on. If you can put in the chat your um, phone, let's see. I wonder if the best way to do this. Let me just look, see if I can find you. 
Should I put my phone number in the top? Put your phone number in the chat. For some reason, I always have trouble pulling that up, but I'm going to try at least add you as a contact. Yeah, put it in the chat. Let me see if I can get you added here. So this is a thread. All right, let's see. Says try again. <laughs> oh, what's that? So annoying. Um, you know what I'm gonna do, Helen, if you don't mind, because this is easy. Is there a link that I can use otherwise? There is. So I'm trying to figure out how to send. Uh, let me grab it. Is it on the website? Uh, it is on the website, but it's easier for me to just send it to you. So hold on, I'm grabbing it, and I'm just gonna figure out. How to hold on? I'm gonna invite by a link, copy the link, so that I'm just trying to figure out the best way to get the link to you. Mm. For some reason, my phone. Is it the drawing fundamentals? Saturday? Yes, that's it. You're on it. Yes, just click on that link, and then we you'll see everybody else's. Sorry, I only have so much brainwave. I can never seem to figure out how to add people on WhatsApp by a phone number. <laughs> I don't know why. It's ridiculous. They can find me, but I can't seem to find them. Um, so go ahead and play around and send it over. I'm going to send mine. Hi, everyone. Hi, Diana. Good to see you. Awesome. I was just Talk thinking of you. Hi. Here it is. So here is my little. And where's Sandra? Is she here? She's here. Hey, yeah. Sandra. So take a minute to goof around. If you've only got it, yeah, and it's true, Helen, if you have water, if you've got like even a watercolor brush or something, you can play around, right? Like water, you can play around with your ink and your brush. I mean, yeah. these bamboo brushes are really killer. You'll want to get them, uh, uh, but you might as well work with what you've got. I'm going to get another piece of Bristol paper. I'd like to see at least somebody send over. All right. There. There. thing. If you were here in this class last week, I didn't have anything. I didn't have any bristle paper. I had green ink. It was ridiculous. Very, I thought I was less prepared than I thought. So today, at least, all the materials are here. And we've got a slightly more complex subject, although I think this is a really good one for ink. Oh, yeah, we are at ink now, huh? We're at ink. We're going to spend the summer doing ink. But I mean, of course, anybody can do anything. Diana often works in um, Diana often works in acrylic. Sandra often works in watercolor. Sometimes she works in ink with us. You you you're not required to use the material. You're not even really required to do my subject that I tell you to. Um, it's just I found that the best way to teach is to oh Nancy that's so pretty it looks like a fire. I'm torturing myself with your subject from last week. <laughs> Birdie. <laughs> birdie. Birdie, birdie. Yeah. So take a look at these as they're coming through. They're kind of neat looking. Oh, Marcy. Uh, look at how different Marcy and Nancy's are. They're like sitting right next to each other. And this, and look at how different my, oh, Julia, yes. I really love this exploratory mark making. Isn't it amazing? Let's have an art show and put all these up. <laughs> it's just like they look so cool. Uh, if you don't have these materials, I can uh, include a materials list on this thread. I, I have before. I actually wait. I might even have it up here. Um. Yep. Here it is. No, that's printmaking. Um. Uh, it's really just an amazing. I'm telling you, it's just the best experience working with ink. It's not just about being a beginner. It's about accepting like who you are as a, accepting your mark making. 
and experimenting and playing with that. So if you guys are ready, I'm gonna start talking about how to draw this subject accurately. Now, for those of you who have never done this, don't panic. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna show you a way to draw that's very different. You'll notice I've cropped the subject up pretty close. In fact, I'll take a picture of this so you can see this one. Um, I wanted, I just, I liked the picture, but I wanted to focus. Oh, nice, Helen. Yeah, yeah, getting right in there. <laughs> Isn't it fun? I really love this. I, I love how like different and even our drawings, although we're drawing the same thing, are going to look very different. And that's partly you can see because our mark making styles are different. All right. So I'm going to show you, a, you know, if you're not, if you're not used to working this way, I'm going to show you how to measure your drawings. And it's if you're new to this, it's going to feel weird and not hard to follow. Um, I want you to jump in if you don't understand something and I'm happy to repeat it. Um, it's also okay just to watch for a minute while I demonstrate and then, and then ask questions as you're trying to do this yourself. So the first key in like drawing something representationally is to measure, to find the vertical distance. And when I say that, I mean the very top to the very lowest point, right? So I've drawn a line here from the top of this little guy to where his little toe sticks down. You'll see this toe is a little bit, these toes are a little bit higher. This one sticks down lower. And then what's the next thing I've got to do? Anybody remember? Who knows? What's the next thing you do after you find this vertical distance, after you define it? We'll find the center. Yes, thank you, Osha, A plus. So I'm going to find the center. Now I'm doing this on a piece of paper here. I'm going to pop my stuff up here so you can see what I'm doing. You guys are looking at this on a computer screen. Maybe you've printed it out, but you're not required to, right? So if you can see here, everybody, have you ever seen uh, anybody hold their pencil out like this in an art class and go, right? And you're like, what are they doing? They're measuring. So what they're doing is they're standing back. I'm holding my arm straight, right? And I'm making my pencil absolutely parallel. I'm not touching my subject, but I'm making my pencil parallel to my subject, right? So the pencil isn't going towards the subject or away from the subject, it's lining up with the subject. And then I'm squinting, I'm kind of, uh, let's see, I have to do this. Let's get a little bit weird when we do this. And then I'm marking, I'm gonna mark, I'm gonna guess where I think this is. Oops, stop my pencil again. Got another one. Uh, I know that's not right, but I'll figure, I'll show you. And then I'm actually lining up my thumb with that mark, and I'm lining up the top of my pencil with the top of the, the subject. And then I'm gonna, keeping my arm straight, I'm gonna go down and see, did I find the halfway point? And I did not, right? It's a little bit too high, so I need to go a little bit lower. So to, I think that's closer to halfway. What do you guys think? Have you tried it? Try it. I think I've got it. Does it need to? I can actually, since I'm next to the source right here, I can actually come over and line my pencil up like this, come up, and that looks pretty good, right? That's halfway. So it doesn't matter whether this is bigger, your drawing is bigger or smaller. If you're working with pencil, you're gonna actually also give yourself a vertical line. If you're working in ink, you're probably, you're not gonna draw the vertical line through, we're just gonna mark the top, the bottom, and the, and the halfway point with little dots. And then the next thing I've got to do is I'm actually going to find the quarter point. I'm guessing. Yep. And then I know. So one, two, three, four. See that? How this is divided into three quarters. Notice I'm not using a measuring stick. I don't need any numbers. 
this is a spatial relationship thing that I'm doing. So I'm using this straight edge or my fingers to determine, are these the same size? This is key in drawing anything, because if you can start to learn to draw, uh, think this way, then of course, the next thing I'm gonna do, what's the next thing I'm gonna do after this? What can I do once I've identified my vertical points? And go around the sides. Nope, one, one thing almost, one thing before that. Anybody remember, what is it? What do I do next? Determine the width. Yeah, determine the width at the halfway point. So now I'm gonna draw, I'm drawing the width to the widest part of the bird. So even though I'm at the halfway point, I'm kind of lining up my line with the edge of the beak here. Yes, which is the widest part of the bird. So to determine this line, I simply measure it like this, and then I line it up against my vertical. And mm -hmm. how wide is the bird? Half the height. Yeah, exactly. So when I come over here, if I'm using, when I'm starting, what I want to see is not an outline yet. I want to see points. This is the thing that doesn't feel natural to people. So if I'm working with my ink, I'm just dipping my brush right in the water. I'm checking here, right? I'm checking on my test paper to make sure it's working. And then I'm going to randomly define a top and a bottom. Here we go. Just randomly. It's obviously bigger than this. Does not matter how big your top and your bottom are. Now, because if you're using a pencil, you can actually draw the straight line through and then erase it later. Since we are working with ink, sure I want good. you not to draw the line, but to find your halfway point. Well, in my opinion. What's that? Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I Sorry. I was urging Marcy to do it with very light ink, but not yeah, light, really. light ink, light ink, totally. Light ink, use the lightest ink you can. You could save that and use your other brush. You can save the ink that's on that one. All right, now I'm gonna check with my ink. I'm gonna make a very light little mark here and I'm gonna check on my paper using my finger. Does that look like halfway? Light. So here's my halfway point. So what I wanna see are these points. Two, three, four. It does not matter. This is not a one-to-one -one transmission. I don't know, I cannot say this enough. It does not matter what the numerical size of these are. As long as they are proportionally correct, you can scale things up or down. So when you find halfway points, it's not really helpful to think about numbers. It's only really helpful to think about spaces and shapes in relationship to each other. This is like, this messes with people's heads, I'm telling you. It is not the way people like to think about this. It's not the way we train ourselves to think about this. So this is a practice. And it looks to me like this at the middle point here, that this line is equal on one side and the other, the width. So how do I figure out the width? I come here and I hold up my, hold up my top of my brush here. I find my halfway. I mark my halfway here. And then I put it, the brush this way. See that? Let's see. Leah, can I ask a question? Yes, absolutely. When you drew your line top to bottom, it's on uh -huh. an angle. Uh, was that intentional? It was angle. a slight, it's a slight angle. Uh, I'll fix it. Is it bothering you? Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that wasn't intentional. I was meaning to, oh, fuck. I know you guys just heard all that. I just knocked over my, I'm not even going to show you what I did. I just made a huge mess. Um, I just fixed it. There you go. Yeah, no, that wasn't intentional. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sure. Thank you for asking. That's great. Now, see, I've marked this. And I can see that the width here is as, as big as the height. So this is what I want to see. Um, this is what I want to see first. So not 
how we do things. So if you're working in, if you're working in pencil or another thing where you can erase, you can actually sketch these lines in. If you're working in ink, oh. notice I've done dots. Uh. <laughs> oh, wait, I'm going to move you a little bit. So you see the real difference right now is very watered down ink. As Nancy was uh, telling Marcy, this is really true. The more watered down ink, the better. Because notice it dries a little bit later. And later, if I don't get my first lines exactly in the right place, I can kind of scoot them around using my bamboo pen to kind of fully define the lines. And you'll see just like here, even if you've got a little bit of gray outside your original lines, it'll look kind of cool. It'll look really beautiful. It looks like you meant to do it on purpose. Let's see. Julie, are you working in ink? Yes. Awesome. Are you sure that this line is halfway? I'm, I'm looking here to see. Hold on, let me check. Yeah, I guess it is. It's funny, it looks shorter to me, but it is. Yep, you're good. Looks great. Nancy, let's see. Two. Excellent, looks good. Yep, these look good, you guys. These look good. I'm gonna give you another minute to get them going and then we'll go on to the next step. Now, if you want to, those of you who are working in ink, we can come and give ourselves little dots, almost like we have a box. We're not gonna make that box. If anybody, if you're drawing this, you could actually do this. You could actually draw this all the way down up you could actually create yourself a little box if you're working with a pencil this is a great way to do it because it kind of gives you the outside parameters yeah be careful not uh hold on one two that looks great osiris be careful you don't need that we don't need this line only because you may not want that line later so see that's why i'm like dotting everything. I mean, it can't really hurt because extra lines look kind of nice over your final lines. But when you're working with ink, it's kind of a good idea not to. Oh, I see. Are you not working with ink? Are you working with charcoal? Oh, Cyrus, are you working with another subject? You're not working with ink, are you? No, it's, it's, a, it's a, a, what do you call it? A graphite pencil? Perfect. Okay, so you can erase it. So the only thing I'd say is, I'm not sure what your of uh, these other lines are. Your quarter points seem a little hinky to me. You've got okay. these extra ones. There's really four, right? Just four. Mm -hmm. One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that's so, the crazy. Yeah. That's the crazy. So. Okay. <laughs> All right, you go, girl. <laughs> but what I what's really great, Osiris, is these. This is correct. And because this is correct, this is correct. So really the height and the width are just fine. Just make sure you don't get yourself too confused. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so the next step, right? For those of you, some of you may, may be already here. You'll notice I have, I'm just going to sketch the very outside shapes of the bird. We're not doing any inner shapes. So if you're working with a brush, a bamboo brush and pen, now we're gonna, we're gonna dip our brush in the water. I'm just, okay, I need a little bit more. So now I'm not really going in the ink, I'm just going in my inky water because I happen to have enough ink in my water to create this nice sort of watery line. Now I'm going to sketch using these kind of outer parameters to guide me. 
Do I know this comes down to the halfway point? Now, do I know that I exactly have these in the right places? Actually, I don't even think so. I think this is a little bit too far. So see how I just did that? See how I just, see, see how you start to hold your blankie really tight in your non drawing pen? Because <laughs> then you're like, oh, damn. Uh, I was having, uh, Sandra and Diana could tell you, I was having a hell of a time yesterday. We were working on this adorable flying fox and I made so many mistakes. I, I just kept putting the ears in the wrong place. So I spent a lot of time correcting and recorrecting that. And I do that really intentionally because I want, I don't want to make this look easier than it is. I don't like teachers that do demos and they do them perfectly. I'm like, I want you actually to see this process of correcting. So there's a lot of correcting that happens. Over here, I'm actually going to be interested. Oh, oh, oh. And Sandra, Helen, Sandra's cats play a big role here in this class. He's stitching on my painting, drinking. What happened? Oh. <laughs> They're being naughty. <laughs> right? So I am actually kind of focusing on mm. this shape, right? The, the negative space. Uh, rather than thinking about a uh, head and then beak, which can mean, mean you'll sort of exaggerate things, I'm actually trying to recreate this shape. To see how I'm kind of going around. Might have even gone a little too far. Yeah. I'm not even still convinced I have everything right, but I, I think I have it right enough. This comes a little bit in from the end because the beak comes a little bit farther. Oh yeah, so we don't have that shape right. Let's try that. There we go. That's a little bit better. Now I'm going to create this shape. So uh, anybody want to tell Helen what negative space is? What's negative space? It's, it's the bit that's not for subject. Yes, it's the it's bit that's not for subject. And sometimes it's easier to draw the negative space and to see it than it is to draw the subject. It's it's freaking amazing, actually. How like, often, um, for instance, uh, the space between the legs. Right. Yes, that's a great. Yes, yes. And we'll get there. Absolutely, Sandra. But also, if you have this little box, you know, this is a negative space. So, um, yeah, in fact, we were I was working. I was teaching a tween class this week for kids. Um, uh, for uh, for for 11 to 13 year old kids. And we were drawing. I think I have to get that drawing. We were doing anime figures. I'll see if I can show it to you somewhere I have it. Oh, yep, here it is. So we did the same thing. So we drew this ridiculous character, one of the kids really liked. And when we were drawing both his arm and his legs, we started with these inner shapes. See that, the space between? It was the only way, otherwise the arms kind of stick way out. So you, you, you get this shape and that shape. And then you can get these shapes. They like that. That was a good tip for them. They're excited. I'm like, if you guys want to draw better than your classmates, they all sure do at 11. Like, they're like, I will get to the top and be better than everybody. Nobody will know how to do this. <laughs> no, no one will know. Um, let's see. I'm also using my quarter points to figure out like how low does the body go here, right? The legs, the sort of puffy white thing from the legs kind of lines up with the quarter point. And then here is the leg here on this side. And then this goes down like that. So see how this makes things. And then I can come in here. Yeah, a little bit closer. Not too. I'm getting a lot of drips too. Um, and then this comes down like that and then goes in and out. So notice I'm not, I'm not stressing. Oh yeah, yes, see how there's a nice little, so there's two little negative spaces here. One is this little triangle where the two feet meet here. You make that, right? And then we got the second foot here, leg goes down, 
goes like this. All right. And then absolutely. So see how I'm like kind of sketching out the outside shapes of everything before I even remotely am bothering with the inside. And then I've kind of sketched outside the box to get the rest of my, I know the rest of my sort of area is not as important as this first area. Now you might be looking at this and going, this just feels wrong. That's good. That's your left brain really being unhelpful trying to tell you what's going on and not really knowing. So I'm training up your right brain, which is a completely different kind of muscle. It has, a, it has to think about things totally differently. It has to think about things spatially. Where are things spatially in relationship to each other? And more importantly, I think I have to pull this out a little bit. And more importantly, and look how kind of watery and fragile this whole thing looks. Um, I really love it at this stage. It looks so, you're like, how will this ever become a thing? And then in here, you're right, negative space, wonderful one, right here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come up here and then I'm gonna come down and then in. So it's sort of this weird hexagonal shape. Now, the other thing about ink, is that we want to preserve the whites. We don't want to get um, our whites show up by us not putting paint on them, right? Not putting ink on them. So like watercolor, we're going to leave this part blank. Notice that where, if you look really closely here, you'll see that at this point where we have this little dot, which is the halfway point, it gets a little bit darker, which is why it's okay to have our little dot mm -hmm. here. Um, but we want to keep, Okay. Oh, sorry, so that looks pretty good. Notice, uh, though, how close the head is to this middle line. So he, his head needs to be skinnier on this side. You have this happening. Here, I'll show you. You have this happening. But really, his head is here. So see, there's this big negative space in this box on that side. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Just double checking, Nancy, that you haven't lost. Sometimes it's also easy to lose the measurements. So I'm just making sure you have it. Good. That looks pretty good. Um, you might, I like, I really like how you've got the head position, Nancy. You might want to, I had to do this to kind of curve this out a little bit more, a little bit up, but otherwise this looks great. Let's see. Marcy, good. Um, the only thing I'll tell you, Marcy, and it's the same thing I told Osiris, is look at actually the shape here. So you've got this shape coming down here to the first quarter, and then out here, this kind of comes out to the halfway point on your edge. You've done this. You've done that, right? You brought it out too far. So bring that, and it's okay that you did it because the, your, pen, your markings are so light, you're not even gonna see them. Let's see, Helen. And sometimes with a piece of uh, tissue or paper yes. towel, water, yes. you can rub it out. I've got it, but it doesn't even matter. At this stage, it'll get so light. All right, Helen. I meant great. for you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You're absolutely right. Sandra spends a lot of time in water medium. Okay. One Sandra, Sandra has the patience. One yeah. land does she spend time? What did you say? Yeah, that looks pretty good, Helen. What did That's you good. say? What land does she spend? She didn't no, say before. land, she said. What a medium. Oh, a medium. that's what I thought. All right. Helen, that looks pretty good. Now you might, um, I feel like maybe he's, yeah, I think it's okay. And notice it looks kind of weird, right? Like, cause we haven't got any of our inner lines yet. Let's see. These look great. 
Julia, okay, this looks, um, so Julia, you drifted your chest too far out. The yeah. chest actually comes in here. So don't worry, just make another line, right? A little bit. So that's why he has this kind of like, Sam, he like, it looks like he's puffing his chest out. Yeah, great, uh, Osiris, you got it. So just do a second line, bring it in, really focus on this shape on this side. And this looks pretty good. Yep. Also, you've somehow made his feet, you kind of reversed his feet, Julia. Notice how big his feet are. And they're kind of drifting over on this side of the line. Yeah, I'm gonna sketch this in so you can really, really see it. Totally threw off everything. So let's see. I see. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, notice yeah. what you did. You. This is so common. This is what we do, right? So here's <laughs> the center line. You just make everything even, even though it's not. Yeah. Isn't that funny? It's a. It's a. It's a. It's a and, and everyone does it. Listen, you're a great drawer. This we all know about you. So use that. So bring it over here, and then you'll have the feet the correct size. I think they're always bigger than we think they should be. So funny, yeah. isn't it? Um, what I notice happens is people just kind of ignore the feet. So <laughs> they make the, like we were working on a bird last week. Let's see. Yeah, I'm still working on it. Yeah, Diane was working on this bird. And every, it looks like such a simple shape. And boy, everybody just like, I mean, it was a struggle for everyone in the class. It was this shape, right? Yeah. This one, and people just and this is what mine looks like. It doesn't even come close. Well, hold on. You're being a little hard on yourself. I know it's better. Here, hold it up. Right, you're coming along. It's looking oh. great. Um, uh, I is wait. now a little bit. I feel like uh, pay attention, uh, Diana. Look at it upside down, and you'll or whatever you do. This shape needs to come out a little bit. So people yeah, I know. really I, struggle. I, 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 I see I that. I can see it exactly. People, yeah. it is a great bird. It was a great bird. People actually, what happens is you stop paying attention once you come down here. So people were making the feet too small because they just weren't paying attention. Uh, we, your left brain thinks that's not important. That's important is the face and the body and the body. who cares about the feet? We can't even see the feet. But feet and hands take up a significant amount of space, way more than we think. So it's important to be uh, aware of them spatially as you're drawing them. I think we're in good shape. I think we should just move on to the next one. Um, let's see. Yeah, I think we're all in good shape. So as you guys are correcting, so be careful not to get any ink into your um, light, lightest parts of your drawing. So let's talk about that for a second. Value, right? Uh, value in art means lightness or darkness. So the lighter the value, the lighter the, um, uh, if, if a one is like white, and a five is dark, two, three, and four, right, are, are values that get slightly darker. So your white values, your number one, your lightest value in ink, you don't want to, you just want to let it, this is why we don't draw lines across and stuff like that, because we want the lightest parts of the uh, figure, we just don't paint them at all. Um, when I start drawing in my inner lines, I start with looking for the biggest dark and light shapes. So, yeah, I wish you could see this. All my drawing materials are spread across the ground. <laughs> so that's like, I'm not worried about the eye yet. Everybody worries about the eye. I am thinking about this shape, right? Because this is kind of my darkest shape. I am thinking a, a little bit about this, although I'm just going to mark it in. This is the difference between one and two, although you don't really need to. There's a little bit of a one here. 
the rest of this is two. Let's see. Right. So these are the next shapes I'm going to be working with. And I'm going to send this across to you. Yeah, you can really see these marks that we're focusing on. So once again, I'm going in with very kind of light watery ink. I'm testing it on my paper. Now I'm gonna come in and try and get this shape in. I'm being a little careful here. I'm using my quarter point, right? To kind of tell me, and my center line to tell me where things are. I'm not getting into all this business with the stripes yet. We're gonna do that later. Here's a little triangle here, down here, right below my quarter point. So see how I'm always paying attention? That quarter point is helping me figure out where all my, how to outline all my, my darts. Down here, we've got this going. Maybe at this point, once I've done that, you're gonna all do your eye too big. So make that one of the last things that you do. Make it really light. There we go. Yeah, it's starting to come out a little bit. Sort of cute, right? So go ahead and get your guy to that point. Really light. We don't even have time to clean up this mess, but you guys do that. Yeah, I'm gonna send this over. So Leah, yeah, for some reason, starting to do the measurements, I ended up drawing it in pencil. Oh, great, that's fine. You can but totally then do that. Over, over it with ink. So you totally can, yeah. And you have a pencil before I put the ink on. Yeah, you can totally do that. I'm trying to put the, I'm trying to dive these guys deep in, right, to their mark making. So okay. it's allowed. A confidence, I haven't done it in a long time. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally get it. Um, but I, that's a valid, that's completely valid. Um, you can, of course, do a pencil drawing, but I don't want you guys, I, I want these newbies. There's mine. Okay. So Sandra, it looks like he's a little too, it's a little bit straighter back here. I know it's hard because I've sketched oh, okay. a lot. Yep. And I think he's coming, I think he's too wide. He's so fat, I must say. I think he's too wide. But when I measure him, he oh, looks oh, like so here's, so here's the other issue. Um, notice that the beak sticks out a little bit farther than his body. Oh, so so if you bring this in a little bit below, that okay. will take care of the fatness. So sh sharpen that, bring that in. Um, and also, uh, feet look pretty. Let's see. The feet should be at the first quarter. Oh, the feet are up to, the, also the feet are up too high. I had so a the really feet, hard time with the feet. Okay, so I want you to look at this. If this is divided into quarters, right? The feet are really in this bottom quarter, two, three, four. So the feet should be no more from the legs here should be no more than one quarter of the height. So I'll make the body longer. I make... just think you need to make the feet shorter. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The body longer like this, but also skinny it up, you know, make sure Really, the key is make sure this get this is no more if this is an, in one quarter, this is one quarter of the height. Okay. The main thing is to what I would do first is actually mark where that quarter point is right on your vertical and then bring your feet there. That'll you. show you where to put everything. Yep. It's just so easy to drift out. Like, listen, I, I've been doing this a long time. 
And I still make a lot of mistakes. It's part of the process to kind of test it and then see like, oh no, that's actually not halfway. So as you look at something, you tend to really hyper-focus on it, which is a survival technique, right? It's like the difference between understanding, um, uh, is this a poisonous berry or is this a berry that I can eat, right? Is that guy mad at me and running at me or can I uh, greet him with a smile, right? Like we're used to sort of hyper-focusing and picking up details to get information for our survival. As drawers, we have to think more macro. We have to think about pieces in relationship to each other. And the problem with focusing in sharply is that we, we automatically just draw it bigger. Um, this happens a lot. It's a really common problem. And it, but you know, and, and also it's just really easy to take one little to make your uh, you know, it, it's like a millimeter really makes the difference. Oh, and not bad. Not bad, first timer. How's it feel? <laughs> Shaky? Are you like, ah, all oh, right? Like it's a little bit like, ah. yeah, not bad, first timer. That's funny. Not bad, first timer. <laughs> not bad, first timer. Pretty good. I mean, you should be feeling really shaky. Right, this is because it looks and also our drawings look shaky at this point. They actually physically look shaky because the lines and we haven't like tightened up our our lines yet. Let's see. Uh, Marcy, that looks great. Really good. Great attention to sorry, I'm gonna hold on, make sure. Yep. Um there's a notice, Marcy. Wait, mm -hmm. I can't. I guess I can't really see what's happening yeah. down here. Are these coming together like a little hexa hexagon? Here, it's a little bit hard to see, so I'm going to redraw it. That's the shape between the legs. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would. I think it looks a little far, but I could be wrong. But I really like this. Is great. This is like wonderful. Like attention to shape. Probably right. the best one you've ever done. All right, Osiris. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, you guys are doing great. Yeah, Marcy, I want to I want to say this is an excellent even You're though the teacher. This is an unknown medium, unknown medium, you're you, you guys are killing it. Well, thank you. But it helps. You got to have good students if you're going to be a good teacher, right? <laughs> Something like that. As far as I understand, the students are reflective of the, of teacher. the teacher. All right, we're all great. <laughs> We're all so awesome. <laughs> Excellent work, guys. I really appreciate your going out. Yeah, Wait, I, really I, sent, I sent one through. Did it not come? I'm not seeing it. Oh. Does it have a phone number on it? I don't see it. Send it all again. Right. All right. Helen uh, Reed. Julia, he looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. One, two. In your final lines, Julia, you may like bring sort of or curve this in a little bit, but I like this looks great. Oh yeah. All right, Nancy. That looks great. That looks really great. Excellent. Great job, you guys. He's really fat, huh? He's he's sort of fat. Where the wings uh, are is really wide. Here. I think that's more the way he's um turned he's kind of because turned you see part of a wing little pre yeah yeah he's turned towards his i know yeah. but we have to draw him like that yeah 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 that, yeah yes he's wide across that part um i actually think he seems kind of slender for a puffin to me but i don't really? know <laughs> like, yeah i don't know then i don't have that much experience with puffins i think uh, if you make him more slender it looks like a penguin i'm not uh i'm not yeah 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 um all right so now I'm going to do, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to start by getting a little bit more ink on my brush, right? Um, but that's too dark. I still want a little bit of wiggle room. So I'm dipping my brush in the ink again, in, my, in the water again. So I have something, oh yes, even more, right? So I have something that looks a little bit like this. It's a darker value, but I can still 
light it. And then here, here's where it gets a little bit scary, but it's good. See how I'm sketching, I'm darkening the darkest areas. Do this slowly. Notice that this top little area is kind of more like a diamond. I've always liked this shape of the puffin head for this reason. It's kind of got this flat. You think this is round, but it isn't really. And then I'm not going to get too much in here. That's really the darkest part. If there are any darker parts. Still using my brush. Um, and then I'm going to add a little bit more water. So I'm dipping in again. So I'm a little bit lighter. So I can do these kind of bores down here. Notice there's these lights. If I want to start drawing in the beak areas, there are light spaces in between. So I'm kind of taking this one triangle at a time. Oops, it's easy to get to. Where's my blanket? Where's my blanket? Right, see how this line just kind of quickly, I'm also working at an angle, so that makes it a little bit. So I can also actually scoop some of this little drip off here. Pretty light there. I think I'm going to stop at this point. I'm not going to do any more there. And then I'm going to remove this one because it's got a lot of sketches on it so we can see more detail. Right? We can see more shape. So, see, I can actually go notice it'll dry lighter. I can go. Darker. I can layer my darks in and have them go even darker. Right? Once I kind of get my feet on where I feel I've got my darks kind of locked into place. Oops, I just leaned on my brush. That's okay because I'm going to be able to cover that up later. There we go. Yeah, that's really kind of it. I mean, maybe there's a little bit down here. There's not much. I feel like, and then I want to let this dry for a minute. And I feel like at this point, I don't really, I would like to, well, okay, there's maybe one more thing I want to do before we move to the bamboo pen. So now I'm once again dipping my brush in water. So I have a very light, super light uh, layer. You can see here, I'm testing down here. My layer is really light. So at about here, the bird gets darker. Even though he's got a white breast, it's darker. And that's because, well, why is that happening? What's happening there? Why is it lighter down, darker down here and lighter up here? So shadow. shadow. So the body is turning away from the light, right? So, th so this is a key moment. I'm going to do it first. Oh, it needs to be so light though. So this is what I'm going to try. I'm going to try brushing in this dark here and then kind of patting it out so that it see how that see how I did that I'm kind of scrubbing it out so it's 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 light. So I laid it in and then I scrubbed it out. So that we've got a light there. Hello mister. Hold on. I have a kitty to feed. Hello. Hello. No, no, no. Come here. Come here. I got something for you. Come on. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, 
Hermes. Hermes. Who's it go? Hermes. Or was it Hermes? So I want a slight wash yeah. down here. You yes. Want, we had questions. Was it yes. Hermes? No, no. So this is Boy Mooka. What are the? Oh, it is Boy Mooka. He has a very pretty voice. Isn't like, he like... hilarious? So Boy Mooka is so weird because he's clearly totally feral. He does not let, he loves other cats. He will not let me touch him, but he comes in and demands food every morning and he's kind of dancing around right now. Yeah. Making that little. I love it. Let's see if I can take a little video of him and send it over. Uh, and uh, what about Julia's sister? Um, she has, start, thank God she has come back. So she comes and visits me at night now, Mabel. She waits till the other cats displaced are displaced by another cat. Well, I went on vacation for five days and wasn't here. Uh, and I think she thought I left. So I came back and she was gone for five days, a week. And then, and I was crying. I was like, oh no, she got eaten by a coyote. Something terrible happened to her. And then one night she popped in. So she's not sleeping in the studio right now. She's, because it's she warm used outside. To? She used to, when it was cold, she would. And and she used to be here in the morning. And then Hermes started sort of dominating her in a way she didn't like. So she comes when he goes inside, which is evening. Smart cat. Uh, because yeah. he's Because he bothers her. Yeah, right. Like, because he bothers her. Because he's that kind of dude. Um, yes. So he <laughs> is here. See if I could take a little. I'm sorry. You know, Helen, you're new here. You'll see. This is just part of what we do. We talk about goats a lot, too. <laughs> Here he is. Let's I love see. it. Do we talk about goat? Nancy works for this fantastic goat. Here he is chowing, chowing down. There he is. I just gave you a video, Sandra. He's oh, like okay. chowing. We talk about our cats. Like we, you know, it's ridiculous. You, do you have any pets, Helen? Yeah, Helen, do you have pets? I do. I'm just about to send a picture of my yes! dog. Yes, send a picture. Oh. Yes, yes. Check out what's going on here. Because oh, of course the animals also really love art. They're like, uh, they like the process. It's exciting for them. So they like weird, the but state I... we get in. What's that? Oh, they that... like the state we get in. German oh. Shepherd mix. Oh, what a doll. What's is his it... name? Helen, what's his name? She's called Ash. Ash, very Ash. nice. She's a, 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 dog. a cat dog. What kind of dog? What kind of dog? Oh. <laughs> Just a street dog. So, oh, um, a street dog. We call them pavement specials here. In, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? What country? South okay. Africa. Johannesburg. You're in South Africa. Hi, South Africa. That's what I said too. I know people oh, from South Africa. Yeah, I don't know a lot of music. I was like, people. "Welcome, South Africa, to the house." <laughs> to the house. I feel like Helen. Charlie Theron. That's your girl. She's from South Africa. <laughs> Is she your friend? Are you guys all friends in like South Africa? Yeah, we all know each other. <laughs> <laughs> And it's winter there. Yes, it is. Yes, it it's already dark outside. There. I had a really interesting friend of mine. My best friend is from Kenya. And uh, although she lives in Oxford right now, and she talks about, um, she was working on a project recently with a graphic designer. She just, she described as being from the equatorial, uh, uh, who is equatorial like her. And I went, so what do you mean by that? And she said, because people who live at the equator or close or you know what I mean in different hemispheres have experienced the seasons differently so you have a dip right because you're we're affected by our weather right if you don't have strong quarters like if your weather comes at a different time I was like really intrigued by that that idea about how co connected we are of mm. course it makes sense right to our weather what is the time difference there Helen. Uh, it's five, uh, sorry, not five, it's six now, 10 past six. In the, so in the evening? Like hours. So yeah, in the oh, evening. so you're on a Western European time. Uh, exactly, yeah. In the oh, summer, wow. I'm on the same time as uh, Europe. 
but oh. um but yeah but then okay. in the winter in your guys's winter it's an hour um later here so yeah it shifts Mm. but yeah no you're right about the seasons uh it's a Leah. different right because you're in an entirely different zone right now because it's winter for you so we're all talking about how hot it is and drought and and it's and I, she said it's helpful to work with somebody from the same like the equatorial and then it, at the equator like regions it's even more different right because it, it isn't winter spring summer fall I, maybe it's exactly. not like that in joburg as well and the light is different it, the light is very different and it's also we do also have like kind of a rainy season and a dry season here right. so like winter is very dry and um summer is very very rainy so right. it does kind of yeah that's sort of a way that's a, it's a very different way of thinking about the seasons than we do where yeah. i am which is portland oregon right northern hemisphere so it's an didn't you live in south africa leah didn't you stay go over there and stay i've over never there? been to south africa I mean, i've never been to the oh, you should come and visit i'm in maybe i can get reuters to send me <laughs> yeah i'm trying to get them to send me to bangalore too so <laughs> we'll see how it goes um i've never been have you osana i just know people from there yeah but I've never yeah. been. They come into the United States. A lot of them come as tourists and they visit the entertainment industry. If you're in and around where you greet and meet people, you get to meet quite a few people from other countries and things like that. It's a very broad and diverse experience. Right. All right, let's see. How are we doing? Okay, so I uh, Excellent, Julia. Excellent. I love how you've already got all this detail without even... Uh, you know, getting in the strong lines yet. So I'm still kind of waiting. Ah, I think I can get it. I think I can get around this. I'm going to blot off these. Yeah, so sending notice, you all right. So notice. Um, all right. Let me take a look really quick. Then I'm going to switch to next. Yeah. Um, one, two. So Sandra, he's the legs are still at one third of the body height. So I'm um, I'm measuring it. One to one, and it's one. No, and it's uh, absolutely well, perfect. No, from the bottom here. One, two, three, four. So hold on. No, that's correct on my piece of paper. Uh, all right, it still looks too long. All right, in any event, this guy is hunch. He's still hunching a little. He, he's still rounding a little bit too much here. Okay. So that's maybe that's what's bothering me. This looks great. This looks fantastic. I love this relationship here. All right, yeah, that looks good. So just look at this. Here, I'll try and sketch it in without ruining too much. It's a little hard to see because, right, we're looking at, we have a kind of a little bit of a lost okay. edge here. There we go. It's a little bit more like that. It's looking great, excellent. You're in good shape. Um, uh, so now that my mushy bird is kind of dry, I want to give it a little bit more definition. So now I turn to these two tools. You'll notice you can only get like one or two lines. And now I want to offer a few contour lines. So see how I can kind of, I can only, I have to keep dipping not something where I can so see how I can like kind of harness in the shape. Say I went too high here with my marks. I can come in. I don't have to actually stick to my exact outline that I've done in ink. See how I can kind of correct this a little bit. And look what happens when I do. When I do this, and I can do kind of a contour line. I like to kind of do a contour line around most of the body. Um, notice I'm avoiding the eyes right now. So Sandra, here's a good like moment where I'm working. I myself didn't get this line quite right either. So now I'm like, okay, here, where is it actually? It's kind of more here. It takes a while because you can only get so much ink. Yeah, 
See, now I'm going into the white. I want to be even more easy. Careful, not dripping. See how I can kind of, and look it. So I have these, I'm not worried about that. So I have these lines outside, but they're not, they're kind of fading away as I add in my contour lines. I'll do more painting. I guess I technically should have painted the feet. Oh, well. You guys might want to paint the feet first. I'm going to, because they're a little bit darker. But see how I can kind of add in this. Look at as I do this. Oh, I know another way to fix this. I made this line a little too thick. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my brush and I'm going to pull out this background a little bit. It's very dark back there anyway. So look how I managed to kind of thin that line out. Crazy, right? Like now you can sort of start to feel the bird emerge very slowly. I'm kind of making it a little bit known. My marks are a little bit more ragged here. Uh-huh, now I've got a thinner line coming up here, which I think is better. Okay. Look at that. It's, it, it's really fascinating to me how just this combination of this two mark making, how it really And I'm not done with the painting. I'm just allowing. See, I'm a little bit reshaping the beak. I can also do things right like this. The beak is actually kind of a light center. The line in the center is actually kind of a light line. So I'm 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 needing a little light space in between my two contour lines here to start to sketch. <clears throat> I can also you do this. <clears throat> So see how this gets strengthened, right? Just by me adding a few contour lines. And then I can go back in, let's see. I'm gonna definitely make this dark part darker. This is where I start to add in the detail. But I don't need as much as I think. And, oops. <clears throat> That's not exactly what I wanted to happen. I'm going to accept it <clears throat> and figure out how to work with it and move on. Sometimes it's easy to fix things. Other times it's a little bit difficult. Notice I'm kind of sketching out the light, the sort of outside edges of the light parts of the feet. Once again, using negative space, guide. Uh, I could do this too. I'm kind of defining the ground. So see how this dark pen allows you to begin to create some stronger lines. And notice how your other lines kind of like peep out of it in this lovely kind of way. So I've got all these other marks that aren't necessarily Right, and, and I'm, I'm not done yet. So now I can go back in with my pen 
I can, my brush, I can darken. In some areas, I want to darken this. Notice how as you darken, things read much more strongly, particularly with these strong lines. Um, so see, I can start to really begin to get, I love it. Actually, this is really, you know, you never know, right? But uh, I think this is gonna be okay. I think this drawing's gonna work out. It's also totally okay if it doesn't work out too. I'm gonna come in here and get a little bit more dark. Uh, now here is an interesting thing. I'm going to put in some much lighter. I've been working with dark ink. Now I'm gonna go lighter, I'm dipping into my brush. You can't really see me testing right now. You can see my testing sheet is just full of here paper. Here, just trying to get light enough. I might even have to go and get more water because I want a very light, or I can take my blankie. Yeah, that's too dark. Um, I'm gonna go get some more. Uh, my ink is just, my ink waters. This is why I have you have two. They're completely dark. I'm gonna actually need to go get some more water. Okay, here we go. Now I've got some nice light. So I can come in here and make these legs, right? Just a little bit darker. They're more like a three in between here. I can get in here. I might have had you do this before, but actually, I think it works. As long as your ink is dry and you're not too watery. And if you feel like you've gone too dark, although I think actually that's okay. Um, now I'm kind of adding in some. So I have these little blotches of ink. I'm seeing how much I can kind of get rid of them by putting water on them and pulling off a little bit. Eh, somewhat it works. Again, just hoping this is gonna work as a shadow. This is like a two, so I'm kind of painting the rock. Notice that I don't have to spend a lot of time painting like craggy rocks and things like that because my brush is like creating so much texture. So sorry, here we go. It's so dark in the back, so I'm gonna go back to like dipping to it straight in my ink. This is another thing I can do to kind of like shape my birdie. Right? And my rock formations for that matter. It's dark over here. So, but ink drawings also benefit from having light areas to them. So does watercolor. So I might just bring this up around the bird and then stop it, let it be kind of, get it um, much lighter, kind of, or even just let it sit. So see, I don't even have to do everything. I don't have to cover everything. Yeah, I really like that, it's fun. Maybe I'm gonna do a very light wash over here. And even wash, scrub it out, right? So I have something. There we go. Yeah. I get a little bit darker down here because I want the contrast between the rock and the background to be clear. Mm 
I'm gonna let it sit for a while. Is it perfect? I guess that depends on your definition of perfect. Oh yeah, nice, Osiris, fantastic. I love, you've totally got the shapes. So you have the feeling of how he's, when you get these shapes right, right? You really have the feeling of how he's, he and gravity are interacting. I really, we're going to spend a lot of time with ink. <clears throat> it's, it's a really dynamic medium. And if you feel like you went too far, or didn't get it right, that's okay. We have half an hour, actually more, 35 minutes. So if you feel like it, you could sketch it again. You can, oh, Diana, that's coming along nicely. So can, all I think you need to do is, I like his branch. I like the way his feet are going. I think just Chop, chop in his eye just a tiny bit. It's a touch too large, but not that much. He's come along well. I do like these threads because we can... <clears throat> Because so we can. I, yeah. So Go I ahead. was on mute. Uh, I don't like the background. Should I mute it more? Yeah, lighter. Go lighter. See what yeah. happens. Because yeah. we're having a lot of good luck with that lately yeah. with your works, right? So let's try a lighter background. If you don't like it, then we'll try a darker background. Yeah, yeah. My feeling is a, a lighter background is softer and more easily transitional. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can see here what a dark background does, right? It's really strong. So sometimes you want that to really push your, your oh, and I just noticed I have a shape wrong. So let's see, can I fix that? Yeah, I'm, I'm just, using the same paint as Wednesday. So I think I'm drying up a little bit here. Ah, uh, maybe that's what's happening. Okay, did you guys see what I just did there? I was looking at my shape and I realized I had it not exactly right. It wasn't curved in enough. So I just went in with my dark and painted over. Um, what's really neat about this process is you're, you're pushed forward. You are forced to confront and accept your marks in a way. Um, you've just got to work around them, right? Like I totally got this dark little blur here and I'm like, damn it. What can I do about that? And then I realized I can't really do anything about it, right? It's, it's there. So I have to just keep pushing forward, not stressing so much about it. I'm coming in here and adding some little dark, darker edges. Excuse me, oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> But it's also true with ink that sometimes you're like, hey, sometimes my drawing doesn't work and that's okay. I can just start over. You know, uh, I move fast on these. So maybe I can just start over. And I remember the mistake I made. So I'm not going to make that this time. You know, that's It'll kind make of a different one. Yeah. Yeah. You make a different one. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do they say? They say, um, uh, 10,000 mistakes. 10,000 mistakes makes you a good painter and a good artist. Well, some of us can do them very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go for 20,000. I remember the first time I uh, did a, I'm forgetting, Lotto taught me something. It was a long time ago in Budapest. Oh, yeah. Portraits. I was working on portraits. I did one. I was like, what do you think? He's like, great. Now do 10,000. 
or 1,000. Hey, 1,000, 1,000, Leah, then you'll be good. <laughs> like 1,000, 1,000 drawings uh, of faces. And I was like, what? And he went, no, no, I'm not going to compliment you on your one. I mean, you know, very good, very good. Keep going. Do 1,000 of those. Then you'll be good. <laughs> Now you know Lotto, so you naturally can imagine him saying that to me. <laughs> very good, very good. Do ten, do a thousand, do a thousand more, then you'll be all right. Nice, Marcy. This is a little bit big, so bring up your. You can just bring your line up, right? Your dark up a little bit more. Okay. Oopsie. See how you've. This is see how the beak is too short. Really, oh. this is like a halfway thing. So, and this dark little hood comes up kind of into the neck and this yeah. comes down. So, yeah, you can, but you totally are on the way. All right. Yeah, so Sandra, uh, boy, Buka just, he, he, he's like, it's clear he doesn't even know, he loves other cats, but he absolutely does not know how to interact with humans. He's so wild. Like you can really see the barrel in him. He just doesn't, but, but he's now knows that I will feed him. And so he meows at me and he kind of dances around, but he won't let me touch him. Absolutely not. It will come. It will cut maybe he came over he came uh, earlier in the week with this big gash on the side of his face oh. um, i know uh, and i i and it looked really bad um and i know that feral cats are fragile right because they you know you, you can't treat it with antibiotics so i've been watching him really closely and feeding him that immune support stuff and um oh good be, but even then he wouldn't really let me somebody gave me a cat trap but and they said you can take him to the humane society, but I'm like, I don't want to do and that. And then what? Wanna... They're gonna well, I him could him? adopt him. I could adopt him. Is what would happen? We would. They would fix him, antibiotic him, probably neuter him, and then I could sign up to adopt him. But, but I don't know. That seems like awfully traumatic to me for him. That's not where he's at. <laughs> so yeah, if it, if his life was in danger, I guess. Yeah, if his life was in danger, I would totally do it. But it doesn't seem. Ooh, Sandra, very nice. Nancy, great. These are so lovely. Ooh, so um, Nancy, you can thicken yes. this a little bit here. Sorry, what? Right? Wait, and make, what? I can't tell at, your point. Look yet. straight, right here. So yeah. here, your you go in this. You have this bending in like this. Really, this is a straight, you, ha you have this happening. This is actually a straight line down. Oh, okay. Over. It's funny, it's very easy to like, I love how his feet look, really cute, it's fun. Now, if you feel like you finished this, I want you to do it again. So yeah. I want you to try it again. Get as close as you can to doing this. If you're like, I want you guys to draw it, sketch it. Um, Sandra, what are you using ink or are you using watercolor? I'm using two different kinds of ink. What's I this happen color? to have a drop ink. What's oh it's nice. It's great. And, for um, color. I don't really like that color, but I know what like, you mean. Like sepia, it's supposed to be sepia. It doesn't really look like sepia, but yep, yep. Oh, Julia, he's a doll. You might want to run um a stronger, I know there's a little drip here, so you might want to wait till it dries and then take a strong, take your uh, bamboo pen and kind of contour this a little bit to pull it in. But I'd also like to see you guys, I'd also like to see you try it again. I love his little feet and I love how, I also, Julia, really love your background. It's like super soft and this, it's very nice. Mine's much harsher. Look at the difference between how we're all doing it. <clears throat> yes. So for those of you who have finished, I'd say try it again. We have half an hour uh, with no expectations. No expectations. I love the fact that um, I could correct my feet because of the way you've got the pen. Yeah. 
right? It just he can just like draw over all the crap. You, you draw do. river, <laughs> and then it just looks like atmospheric little extra marks, yeah. right? It's like, great. and you're like, I totally meant to do that. That's like a cat it's falling so off a shelf or something. I yeah. meant to do that. I meant to do that. I meant to do that. I'll show you a couple of other uh, ink drawings that I've done just to show you how I think this process works. This works really well with figure drawing. So here's like, and it has this kind of looseness, like here's a figure. See how my, my contour lines really come in over, I wanna see, here's a really good one. This is where you can really see it. I started with my wow. brushwork, right? And then the contour lines come over and then the brush, the extra lines just look oh, like- I like this one. Isn't that neat? Yeah, this is one of my favorites. Um, but it's not like the the everything's still kind of running off. But like, you know, I totally got the leg in the wrong place on that one. But you know, now it just looks like kind of background. That's what's really nice. I can also add a light edge by putting my right my line a little bit above on top, floating above the thing. It works out. It really can work out. Uh, this one I also really like. Wow. Right? So you can see where the original lines were and then how I can use that, look at this, this one, the arms like, woo! But it doesn't bother you, right? It feels like part of the process. So that's the really great thing about ink, that line, you can, what Julia was saying, you know, that line, you can just pull it in. You can write it in. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you can't. <laughs> that's it sometimes you can't sometimes you're as you're starting to kind of make your way uh let's see oh helen fantastic first draft first first shot i'm hugely impressed do it again <laughs> do it again you've got 20 minutes you're probably getting a little tired you all might be getting a little tired no matter what time it is um, it's very, oh, Sandra, he's adorable. Very nice. It's very good to push yourself to work another 20 minutes after you're tired. After you've acknowledged, I'm really That's tired. That's good for exercise. I don't know how much he's for drawing. It is great for drawing. You let go a little bit of your um, uh, tightness, thinking. right? <laughs> your thinking. Yeah, your left brain thinking. You're just too tired to think about it, so you kind of move into automatic. Now, sometimes it can lead to disastrous results, right? But other times, it's like, oh my god, I, I'm not even fighting it anymore. A lot of it is a lot of our exhaustion, our mental exhaustion in drawing is having to be like your left brain's like, nope, that's not how you do this. Uh, let me make feet even sized. Let me. Um, uh, let me make the feet small, right? Like me make this shape this way. Let me totally try to like, um, because that's how your left brain is exhausting you by giving you wrong information for your drawing. And so at some point your left brain gets tired and it's just like, I'm tired. I can't understand, don't understand what's going on here. And that's usually the moment that your right brain will kick in, but you've got to push through tiredness which is the trick. <clears throat> it feels too hard to start over on another one. Um, that's your, that's your right. <laughs> that's your right. You could just sit there or you could try it. There's just an interesting, I mean, we have 20 minutes left. So if you want to just goof around with the ink or just sit there and drink a cup of coffee. I guess, visit. I guess for me, I don't know what I would do differently. Not, not cause I think I got it right, but. Not, you just do it again, Nancy. Do, you're just like, it's not that you do it again. You just do it again. Don't just think practicing. too much. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Don't think too much. Okay. Just try it. Do it exactly the way you did it before. Off I go. Try Mario, it. Yes. The second one comes out better. Yeah. 
you know uh printmaking is like that too right like often like the first print is like meh the second print is like oh that's a little bit better so ink is that way it's not that you're consciously thinking i want to do this better you're just going to do it again okay. uh, maybe you you go faster and more loosely yeah because you've done it because you know it oh cyrus this is a fantastic drawing look at he's so adorable he's just like who oh. Hello, hello. <laughs> I really feel the character of yours. He's he has he's a very um, goofy spirit. I like it. He's got a lovely kind of. Hi there. <laughs> it's quite quite darling. I'd like to meet that guy. <laughs> I'm gonna stop here. Okay, you want to try it again, Sandra? Really quick. Just, you know, I need. To I almost okay. didn't do a class today. I have so many things to do. I appreciate your coming. But good to see you. All right. So tomorrow okay. there is no uh, tomorrow. Lotto has always good to see Sandra. Hey, Sandra. Bye, Sandra. Hey, Cyrus. Bye, 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 Sandra. See you tomorrow. Soon. See you tomorrow. I Come to my that class. Huh? Not things just yet. Oh, good. Um, so tomorrow there was supposed to be a printmaking class, but Lotto has a daughter, uh, she's about six, who has a lot of like allergies, uh, sort of deadly allergies. So she is going, they're going to New York tomorrow to take her to the doctor for, uh, so she, there's nothing wrong with her. She's in a study and they need to finish checking this medicine. Where does he live, so Lotto? They, he lives in Ithaca, New York. Um, but they have oh, to okay. take her to New York to, City. West Coast, so for a while, New York is a long way. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's uh, he's going to New York from Ithaca. So uh, he can't teach tomorrow, but he'll be back on the 24th. Um, <clears throat> it's a great class for those of you who are not in it. It's really oh, yeah, fun. Indeed. You need a few things, but not that many. Not as many as you think. It's funny. I, I was telling Janet Roberts that she should do this class. And she yes. said, oh, yeah, we're talking about firing up the press. And I'm like, do this class. You don't need a printing press. You don't need it. You just can like do it. Like it's simpler than that. It's like much simpler than that. You can't buy a printing press before you've even done the plates. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, I'm like, come back to this. You'll love it, Janet. You'll be able to make six you'll be able to make multiple numbers of one of your crazy drawings like even just a portion of one of your crazy drawings will probably look good but i i'm really finding with this class nobody gets it until they do it wait a minute i could do this i could simplify it's really about the art of simplification as much as anything else um and it's fantastic so i highly recommend you try it uh if you can I'll Leah, definitely try it next week. Put, can you put the since we're starting over, would you mind putting the one where you have your grid or sure. you would, thank you? Right there. Did you send out a supply list last time, last week for that printmaking? I did. Yes. So it's on the thread. Okay. Okay. It's really fun. It is. It's like kind of mind-blowingly fun, like way even more fun. I know I knew this stuff was going to be fun, and even I'm like, oh my god, this is so much fun. Okay, yeah, a little bit better, but not good. It's a. I still have shit to do with this, but I'm tired of the bird. <laughs> it's a bird. Uh, are you the one they told me about bill trailer no. no i thought you told us about bill trailer i think i did <laughs> <laughs> i'm in the other class okay i've got all these classes anyway uh leah have you, yes. you were talking about using the brush this morning with like the calligraphy like stuff. Mm -hmm. And I came upon this guy, you would be, you would love him if you don't already know of him. His mm -hmm. name is uh, Ka Kazuaki Tanahashi. Let me see. And he uses a mop to paint with. It looks like a mop, like a big mop. And some of them are small, as small as the one you were using. And then he took out this real big one. 
And it looks like it's just oh a big God, old. Oh my God, you're right. I'm Mom, looking at him right takes, now. He makes all these amazing things. You would love him, especially because it looks like you might be headed in that direction to do some stuff like that. So here He's he amazing. is. And let's no, Cyrus, send his, send his name in the thread, please. Okay. Azuaki, he had a big old oh, muff. Oh my like, God, he, he has something <laughs> called brush mind. Yes, you would <laughs> love him. <laughs> Look at that. You're right, I totally dig that. What are you doing? And this is what, you are such a weirdo. Hey, Herms. Herms, say hi. Here's Herms. Guys, I'm gonna have to go, but thank you so much for the class. It was Helen, so much fun. Helen, join us anytime. And uh, reach <laughs> out if you need will. anything. Bye, and, South uh, Africa. Yes, thank <laughs> well, you for bringing South well, Africa to the house. Thanks for bringing us this <laughs> Hopefully the first of many. Yes, absolutely. You're the first link, so the most important. So um, <laughs> thanks for joining us and great work today. Take care, everybody. Thank yes. you. Bye. Bye. I feel like she and Mariana uh, Pagara should meet. Paraga should meet since Mariana. Didn't we have another oil. person from South Africa in the group? Never. And they left. This is our first one. Oh. This is our first one. Look at what. I like her accent. I'm going to leave to my paint. Hi, Diane. Dry. My paint is dry and I'm tired of the it bird. I need to break. I got you. <laughs> All right. Um, so anybody who wants to can join class with me tomorrow. Diana, how's great, it going Diana. with the thing? How's it going with the press club stuff you guys are doing? I mean, we're doing. We're doing. I'm of you guys. I'm a member. Uh, good. We just came out of the award show. That was a big success. She's yeah. already going up. To, she's getting ready for That's December. what I'm saying, Janelle, that we're doing the next event. Yeah, so. I'm starting to work on Diana, that. this looks great. This looks really great. It's, it's beautiful. I love yeah. the color. It's, yeah, but I get like wanting to take a break. So yeah, okay. come join tomorrow if you want to. I wait, I wait. We've got see about- you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Bye all. Leah, I'm leaving in five minutes. I have astrology classes on. So I go from drawing to astrology. I appreciate, I know how busy you are, um, Osiris. I really appreciate that you make the time for this class. Thank you. I had to get up in the morning early to do my I prayers. My then I have to be online by eight. I'm like, oh my God. I know, I know. That's but what I, I really would man, I love you guys. It like gives me another world out of my own world. You know, that's what's nice about knowing all these other people. This know? is why we like um this is why we do these classes, right? It's it's as much about um meeting each other and we're seeing where everybody is and checking in. Well, you know, women, we're gonna always have it together. That's why you have to hang around your girls. <laughs> we're gonna always be at the forefront. We always know what's going on. Oh, I think Helen had a really good first experience. Boy, yeah. she did great too. I think so too. She's talent. She's got some talent, huh, Leah? I think she's, she's good. Just, yeah, I think she'll do well. I think so. oh, yeah, I'm so happy to see somebody from South Africa. Every time we get one, then we have this doorway because she'll tell other people and then we'll get a few more. Yeah, but we have a diverse, I love Nancy and her partner, you know, and you you two. I didn't see your, your partner's name. I didn't, I just see it's Nancy. Marcy. Yeah, Marcy. 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 M-A-R-C-I. Marcy. Oh, C-Y. Hey, Marcy. Okay. And then uh, Sandra is from, you know, the France. And then we have, we have all these, it's fun. It gives me like a whole nother world. You have no idea. It's so much fun. For me. I know. Half the fun is just the, the chatting and the getting to know everybody. Yeah. yeah. And hanging out. <laughs> yeah. And you can't really do that with less. I like that because you do that while you're working. It, you can't yeah. really do that in less than two hours. It gives you, and, and let's face it, there's a part of drawing and painting 
that's a little bit tedious. I don't mean that in a bad way. Tedious, tedious is not a lot of tedious, right? Like there's a lot of tedious work. So it helps. I think Diana, Diana shows up as much just to like, avoid the tedium of doing it on her own right like that's part of it i mean i i tend to, and i kind of like it too because i spent a lot of time just locked up in my studio working listening to audiobooks and well i'm i'm very i'm social but i'm private um i spend most of my time as alone yeah but i'm on the phone and i'm on the email and you're on a zoom and all of that but mm -hmm. i i'm a loner most of my time is spent by myself mm -hmm. Yeah, my so husband goes nice, in his studio can... and does his music. I go what I'm doing. Okay, that's how we. Oh, that's how we roll. I know. So it's a nice like way to connect. But to, when Sandra was sick, it was so nice to be able to see her all the time, so we could keep an eye on her and, you know, like while she was going through treatments. It's. I mean, it's just a lot of things. There's a lot of things that are important about it. That um, Nancy and Marcy, where do you two live? Where do you two live? Uh, right now we're in the um, Adirondacks, but normally- Where is that? Where is that? It's mount it's like a mountainous region, um, New York, like West- Oh, it is in New York. It's, yeah. the, it's the first it's state- It's in upstate New in, York, like what yeah, keeps seeing all it. those areas? Yep, yep, to it's the, the west. The, it's the first state park in the country. Oh, wow. wow, I'm gonna check it out then. I'm definitely gonna look into it. It's where all the Jewish people used to go. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, I love my Jewish people. No, wait, my where is that? That's the Catskills. You're right. That's the yeah. Catskills. No, this is very waspy. Waspy, right. Oh, I don't waspy. say that. That's I don't where say the that non-Jewish people, the waspy people go on vacation. Yeah, I don't <laughs> say that proudly. This is like this is like um industrial barren area. Right. Oh, oh interesting. People who have railroad wealth or oh um, wow. They used to live in the city, you know. Uh huh and come up here for their vacation. Thank That's you for thank you for hipping me. I'm like, okay, now where is that? <laughs> I'm in Cali. It's like a whole different world. It's like a whole different country, which we talk like, about. Okay, it is a whole nother country. They're crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. In a good way. <laughs> yeah. Good way. Well, the good thing is that the people can come here and get abortions and all that. I'm like, I just, oh, I'm about to have a fit. It's like, but you know. That's a good thing about Cali. We do some open things here. People probably have to come there and get married soon. Married, all kinds of stuff. I don't know. You think they're going to try to reverse those laws? Because my kids are going to have a fit. They went out in the streets and fought for that shit. You know? Yeah. You think they're going to reverse the marriage laws on the LGBTQIA plus? Well, I don't know. I only say that because Clarence Thomas was... You know, quote yeah, quoted. Yeah. Well, that. they're ready to murder him. You do know that, right? Several of my friends wanted to do a drive by. <laughs> he's, he's kind of a problematic dude. He always has. He's to. problematic and he lives totally in a delusion. Like, what are you doing? Exactly. What we're going to do, what are we going to do, ladies? Keep working, keep fighting. Keep hustling. <laughs> you know, it's you have a nice. You have a nice voice, Osiris. It's pretty. To sing, I just never see. I can sing, but I'm not a singer. People have to know the difference. Singers go on tours and go in a recording studio and make records and get with bands. I sing in the shower now. I used to I'm be a shower a singer too. I'm a shower singer. Also, I I'll go one step further. I love karaoke. You do. Are you a karaoke? What's your favorite song, Leah, that you're karaoke? -ing? Um, current. Let's see. Currently, I love singing. Um, uh, I have three that I really like right now. What is what is a song by Ch Chaka Khan? Oh. Um, and, and Rufus it's a bunch called of, which one? Uh, you know the one that she does with Rufus. Um, do do. You know what I got. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, I know oh, what something you good. got some fire inside. <laughs> yeah. da, 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 da. How about you? How about you, Nancy? <laughs> oh no, I don't do it. <laughs> you know, the, <laughs> and then Marcy, I also, are you karaoke? You karaoke, uh, Mark? 
I haven't done in a long time, but in my day, but I'm a little older. So I did like you two. I'm older than with, you. With or without you. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. With or without, with or without you. That one. See, yeah. Yeah. The rock band. It, who was that? Nirvana? Hi, guys. Yeah, you yeah. Too. Bye, Sandra. Bye, Sandra. Bye. See you soon. See you soon. Have a great day. Uh, it was you too. It is with or without you. That one, right? Oh. Uh, yeah. yeah. I also really love singing um, Macklemore's Thrift Shop. It's hard because it's a lot of rapping. It is it's a really lot. Really fun, but he's so cute. I love How's it go? Shows. Can you sing um, it? Um. Uh, uh, of course, now it's like blanking from my head um, oh, as I'm trying to remember the chorus. Um, I bet it is. Uh, <laughs> isn't that crazy? I find this is happening all at, once I turned 54. This really started happening a lot. I started forgetting things that I should not be forgetting. Um, uh, it's a uh, uh, one can hold up. I'm going to pop some tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. Oh, oh yeah. I'm hunting, looking for a come up. This is fucking awesome. I wear your granddad's clothes. I'm yeah. incredible. Uh -huh. I'm in this big ass coat from That's the thrift shop down the road. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Cute. I like Lizzo's new song. I think oh, for God's sakes, I'm singing that all the time. Music. It's very, it's very uh, uh, disco-y, her and Beyonce. Turn did up you, the music. Did, ben, did you see like, uh, Feeling Fabulous? She did uh, one of those karaoke yeah, sessions right. with uh, the guy in the car. Oh, so this is yeah. The yeah. The one that does the sing, I love his show. He's so oh, funny. Oh, God. Her, it's it was so cute. Turn. So he's in the car. He's like, all right, try singing this one. And she sang the song of Fabulous, you know, looking, is it, what is it called? Looking Fabulous. Um, she can, it's really, it's uh, her most popular song here. Hold on. The one it's about damn time. Yeah. No. It's about damn time. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, no, no, not that one here. Hold on. The I'll other almost, one before that is yes. the one before that then. And so I he just, starts playing her song. She gets so excited in the car that he's playing her song. She starts singing her song and she's like, she's so cute. It's like really, really adorable. Um, she's adorable. Who is that? I love that. Lizzo. Lizzo. Oh. She's just. She's bringing it out. I love Lizzo. She's she brings just it. so amazing. I'm a beat up. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved, you know, here she is, no, this big star. No, Everybody is singing her song, and she gets so excited when he plays her song for her to sing in the car and carry on. You know, they had to struggle a lot before they got to, to where yeah, they yeah, are. Yeah, yeah, she's grateful. She's grateful, but she's just so powerful. Anyway, she's really great. Um, Here's my drawing I did over the weekend. I've been practicing. Let's see. Can you see oh, it? that looks great. Yeah. Oh, Sarah, your drawing is getting really good. It's a head. I got a good teacher. It's a head of an Indian guy, a That's statue really I have good. in the house. It's and really, I was really practicing. Good. I'm like, I'm going to practice for my class. That's very good. You're getting like, it, it, I'm really enjoying watching the pro your it progress. Teaches. It's really fun. Because you let that? me be the crazies. It's wonderful. <laughs> Now, really, <laughs> what can I do about it? <laughs> I can't like help us get rid of any of our crazies. No. We're allowed. We're allowed. We just work with it. You know what I've been listening to all morning? Don't you hate that when some song gets stuck in your head? You're going to be die laughing when you find out what it is. What is it? Now here is the star of the sim and the skipper, the Gilligan. <laughs> A millionaire and his wife. Oh, I mean, why is that in my head? Because <laughs> it yes, because it's um, good as know. hell. That's what I like. That's what I like. That's my favorite Lizzo song. Good as Which hell. one? Good as hell. This one. That's really good as hell. I'm gonna play it for you. One or two. Maybe it will play after ads. Come on, stop. Stop. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You have to listen to this. Here, hold on.
No, wait, that's not right. That's not the one. You got to get the clean of the dirty version, which one? Yeah, right. I'm just trying. Just do version. Hold on. I think it's this is the one. Did you hear it? Right? Do you hear that sound just like this? That's it. That's it. This is it. Good as hell. Yes. Here, hold on. That was the clean version. <laughs> you got a radio version and then version you have the clean version. So one goes to radio, one goes to the clubs and stuff. out that door <laughs> sorry you guys now you're just now we're just indulging stop stop i'll stop was lizzo the one that um did she does she play flute yes yes she does. She's the she's one that was at the met gala with like um yes she was playing and... the flute on the carpet oh god she's just so fucking amazing she's so beautiful she's very pretty too. she's gorgeous as hell but also gorgeous. she's just got uh energy of she's got the you bubbly. will she's just got the whole package and i don't know bubbly. who does her videos like how much creative control she has in them but they're very compelling like bit like like visually she also really has it and the her designers don't they do a great job dressing her oh jesus she's, she's a big amazing. girl and they do a great job she's like vogue magazine every time she looks great. Every, she's just hot she's hot and fun and uh and uplifting so that's when I've been looking at that, but I don't know if I can say that, but she loves it. She's like, I, th that's what she's, she told him. So as she's in the car singing her own song, he's like, I can't hit the high notes. She's like, you will. And she had him sing it, um, <laughs> which I think is really like. And he just fits right in. Huh? <laughs> she, wants, just fits. she wants everybody she doesn't want to sing a song that nobody else can sing. She wants everybody to be able to sing it. That's a very like kind of um, uh, what do you think about attitude? What do you think about Beyonce on the glass horn? I haven't seen that one. Oh, Marcy, great, wonderful. Thanks. Wonderful. How do you like it? Um, yeah, no, I think it's fun. I, I um, struggled with um, the proportions, you know? Yeah. Usually, usually I do it like the same size as the image. And this time I ended up doing it bigger because we're going off your screen. Right, right. So it kind of freaked me out. But all right. Yeah, well, I, I want to credit you because it's hard to do that. It's a mental shift that you have to make. So don't worry. Here, I'm going to stop the recording.